Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. They won't get my vote in any popularity contest. The poster for 1983's ETN, the extraterrestrial nasty, raises expectations for a gleeful spoof of the Spielberg classic in which a small child befriends the wrong alien. Unfortunately, anybody who saw the film based on that poster was in for a crushing disappointment, as it was in fact 1967's Night Fright, repackaged in the UK for a video nasty audience. Well, where shall we start? The most interesting thing about Night Fright is that it was made in 1967, when the genre it falls into was all played out. We interrupt the music to bring you a news bulletin concerning the fiery object that was reported to have crashed in the hills east of town an hour ago. This is every 1950s alien invasion cliché you have ever seen. Take me to your leader! Shifty government agents. I went out there where that thing cracked up and those government boys wouldn't let me near the place. Local police willfully ignoring the obvious. Say, where the rocket fell. You don't suppose there's any connection between the rocket and this thing that we're... No, I don't see how. Come on, we got work to do. Scientists spouting the obvious. When I was at Cape Kennedy, I was involved in space research. Space research at Cape Kennedy? How remarkable. Are you ever serious? and stupid kids. Isn't this a spot with a flying saucer landed? Who are, of course, all in their early 30s. Well, I'm not gonna let the fuzz tell me what to do. Yeah, I'm groovy. Possibly late. Oh, Chris, don't be juvenile. He couldn't be juvenile if he tried, despite efforts to make him seem like a teen philosopher. When I think about the things that we don't know about, well, about the sky and the earth and the air and the wind, and, well, even this leaf. Well, Chris, I didn't know you were a philosopher. And wandering through it all is a badly lit creature. Looking like the robot monster has lost its helmet, chasing down its prey at a steady walking pace. There is not even a hint of irony to suggest that the producers were consciously spoofing the genre. Well, it does have some familiar characteristics, but... Uh... There are also certain differences. Nor do they really have an original take on that genre, although, admittedly, the creature is not an alien. The purpose of the project was to try to ascertain the effect of cosmic radiation on live animals. Turns out the effects aren't great. <laughs> but the difference this small change makes is negligible. OK, OK, you proved your point. So. Having established this is, at best, a weird throwback to a genre that was not that great to start with, is it at least well made? I couldn't care less. No. The director, who by the way edited Manos, which isn't doing his CV any good, He said what? heard somewhere that juxtaposing sounds between scenes would give even the dumbest movie an artistic validity. <laughs> especially if you pair it with suddenly yanking the camera backwards for no apparent reason. <laughs> well, Sue, that sounds about like it. And obviously, the more you do it, the more artistic it becomes. Most of the film is scenes of people driving. But that's all you'd better do, Chris Johnson. Or walking. Alleviated by occasional bouts of running. Towards the end, they spend a solid five minutes waiting. As the body count racks up, we are forced to wonder if anything can stop the creature. Or if anyone is even going to try. I can probably ignore that. Yeah, I guess we have had enough excitement for one day. But B-movie stalwart John Agar has a plan. All the way home, she just sat there beside me, as rigid and motionless as a, a mannequin. What did you say? That apparently involves a mannequin. Here's a list of things I need. And a bunch of other stuff. Honey, I hate to ask you this, but there's one small favor you can do for me. Including a favor from his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. 
Would you mind making it a little bit clearer? I can't wait to find out what it is. He tricks the monster using a decoy girlfriend. And it works, but firstly, from what shop were you able to get a mannequin and a wig, but not women's clothes? What's going on? Secondly, if the decoy hadn't been dressed as your girlfriend, did you think the mutated animal, which to this point has not shown a great deal of intelligence, would have just stayed at the fringe of the trees going, that's not Joan, this is a setup. What the devil's going on around here, Clint? Finally, to get the creature to the decoy, they use a teen couple as live bait. <laughs> If the creature always attacks cars, I'd have put the bomb in there. I can't say that I blame you. All in all, I'd rather have seen this movie. Oh, Chris, let's get out of here. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here for other reviews of movies exactly like this one. Night Fright is an archetype of its subgenre. What other favourite movies of yours are archetypes of slashers, rampaging animals, alien invasion movies, and the like? Let us know in the comments below. Now get out of here.